So we have a vision of distributed and sustainable energy and mobility. And in our view, that begins with a disruptive electric motor. And what makes our electric motor disruptive are a couple different things. One, because we don't use rarest metals, you can make them anywhere. Rarest metals are actually not that rare, but they're a class of metals on the periodic table, pretty low, pretty heavy. And they're usually co-located with thorium, which is a radioactive mineral. And so when you refine them, you typically dump radioactive waste into the land, air, and water, which has caused most countries to back off of their desire to refine them. So refining capacity got concentrated in China, and then China imposed a price tariff on the export of the raw materials, which then pulled motor manufacturing into China, along with cheap labor costs. So right now there's a world trade action on this issue. But also, in 2010, China cut off supply of rarest metals to Japan, and it really terrified a lot of Japanese manufacturers who have to provide just-in-time manufacturing, which means that if they ever default on their ability to provide a product to their end customer, then it's really the end of that relationship and, and a huge problem for their business. So there's a critical supply chain problem that we solve. There's an environmental issue that we solve. We democratize the supply chain. And then we also lower the cost and improve reliability and efficiency of key technologies and renewable energy, energy efficiency, and sustainable transportation. We have a pretty awesome motor technology. It starts there. Uh, so this is an electric motor that has high efficiency over a wide speed range, partly because the technical properties of the motor operate like a variable speed drive. So it means that you have really strong continuous efficiency for all sorts of applications, whether it's a propulsion application like an electric bicycle, or an HVAC application, or a pump, or a washing machine. We just use steel and copper and software. Our competitors use rare earth metals to create an electromagnetic field to generate torque. We use steel and copper and software. You take a steel stator, which is the stationary part of the motor, and it has poles. And then you have a steel rotor, which is the part of the motor that spins, and it has poles. And our patent is on the geometry of the relationship between the stator and the rotor. And then you wind the stator poles with copper, mat with copper wire, and then you send alternating pulsations of electric current through the copper wire, which induces reluctance torque, causing the rotor to spin. So did you ever play with a magnet and a pin when you were a little kid? So the pin will follow the magnet around. You can create essentially a magnet by winding steel with copper and then sending electric pulsations of current through that stator. And then the rotor follows the stator pulsation, the current, the, the pulsations of current through the stator, just like a pin follows a magnet. And so it's called switched because there's switching of the electric pulsations, reluctance because it generates reluctance torque and machine because an electric machine can work in motoring mode or generating mode. Switch reluctance machines have been around, but they were never high performance. They, they had noise and vibration problems. So to have a motor which is easy to manufacture, has a lower cost of active materials, but still offers high performance, that's disruptive because it lowers the cost of the end product. It also means that you can make it anywhere. So our European customers can make it in Europe. Our South American customers can make it in South America. Our US customers can source it here. Uh, and our Southeast Asian customers can source it in Southeast Asia. Emery Levins is a strong proponent of switch reluctance machines as a demand side alternative to rare metals. Because what he was saying is that what's not rare are the rare metals, but the human capacity to design these alternative motors which require a more sophisticated hardware and software design. And that's what we're really good at. I think the fact that you can create jobs, democratize the supply chain, clean up the supply chain and not have radioactive waste as part of motors, and then also enable key technologies, renewable energy, energy efficiency, and sustainable transportation around the world, including to countries and populations that don't really have it, that's noble profit. Thank you.